All right, time to make some welding fingers. And since we do machining, let's machine the fingers as well as bend and weld them. I'm going to start with a, a piece of 3 8 inch rod and try to bend it to about a 1 inch radius and see that the part of the finger that comes all the way down to the part is going to be as vertical as possible. I've made two versions and we'll start with the one that was machined and welded. We're going to go ahead and use the uh, collet chuck and the power uh, winder that I made for the collet chuck. And next we'll face off and then drill uh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch. I think that should be a good enough drill size. I like spot drilling rather than center drilling because spot drilling is for guiding drills and center drilling is for making centers and right now we want to drill. Got about a one inch slug of half inch copper round, round bar. Go ahead and deburr it so that it'll go into a collet more easily. We'll turn it down uh, to about a th three eighths of an inch from the end and that should be enough to go into the uh, socket, uh, into the hole that I made in the uh, mild steel bar. Okay, we're down to point two three eight. Turn it down to two twenty eight. Let's get down to two nineteen on the readout. fit. Well, as always, the drill was oversized and the copper fits in a little bit of a wobbly way, but that's okay because we're going to weld it. After all, this is a welding and machining combo. This is the base after bending it a little bit. The measured diameter is uh, 379, call it 380, 
Uh, what we will do is we'll turn a 40 degree taper at the end of the uh, copper and uh, do that with the compound. Alright, I've set the XDRO to uh, the measurement on our um, micrometer and this should bring us right down to zero. <clears throat> Okay, we're at x0, and the tip is at x0. All right, so I'm going to leave about um, a sixteenth of an inch, let's say 60, 65 thou behind. So I'm going to come back on the compound until we're at 65. So that'll be the diameter left behind. And I'll keep this compound in this position. I'll make that the new x0. And with that, <clears throat> as we come back, we'll turn and we'll keep coming forwards until we are at X0. We'll keep the carriage locked as well. Time to clear up this mess a little bit. I've got 40,000 to go. Well, that was not the right thing to do. It left a very raggedy finish. What we'll do is we'll take a 10,000 depth of cut the next time. No, maybe a 15,000 depth of cut. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, I will go ahead and rough up the tip a little bit so that it has a better chance of uh, sticking to or holding apart um, rather than a smooth tip. Okay, here's what it looks like after some work with the bending bar. Uh, it's been tipped, uh, turned very nicely. Here is a vertical reference. And it's going to be on another piece of metal. It should give a mostly top-down uh, pressure on the part. By bending uh, the steel bar here, it allows for basically three points of contact, which gives it stability. It rolls on those two points in the back. Third point where it's going to apply pressure and so it should hold things nicely in place. And as promised, here is the second version which is done with machining only. Okay, we'll do some quick deburring. Next we'll do some threading in reverse. Looks good. This is the lazy approach to checking for fit. I am not too concerned about making it absolutely precise because it's going to go into the one part and it's not going to be repeated. So I'm going to go uh, maybe a couple of thou more and see what we end up with. Okay, I think this uh, grade 8 nut will just thread on but won't go all the way through. I'm going to deliberately leave this thread a little bit oversized so that it will really jam into the copper uh, nicely and tightly. Making threads on the opposite side. Okay, 
Yeah, current measurement is 261 and we want to be 258. Springy steel, only managed to remove about a thou. I think that'll be good. Next we'll face off the copper rod and drill and tap it. Next I'm going to use a number 7 drill which is 0.201 and that should give a 75% thread. This is a quarter twenty bottoming cap. It's got spiral flutes and it should allow me to get as low as I can without poking a really deep hole in the copper. Okay, I've made a tiny mark right here at the half inch mark and we're gonna see if I can manage going in exactly half an inch or not. So let's give it a try. Copper is quite grabby. Okay, oh, cleared it up nicely. Um, I'll try one more time, and if not, then I'll go uh, hand tapping. Here's what the threads look like. Okay, now we will go ahead and set the DRO to the correct diameter, move in on the cross slide, uh, leaving 60 thou or 65 thou behind, and then use the compound to cut the taper. Okay, right now the tip of the cutter is at zero on the diameter, and now we're going to back out until we have, say, 60 thou. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, so this time it was not a braised, just uh, screwed on and then finally uh, turned down to match the diameter of the steel rod. Okay, now for the lower rod, this time we're going to do something different. I'm going to make 
uh, raised areas on either end of the rod so that the rod will ride on those and just turn the inner diameter down by about 25 thou. Okay, this is not ideal because we have already turned this diameter down from 3 eighths of an inch, but I think it'll be good enough for our purposes, which is a relatively uh, smaller uh, inner diameter, uh, inner part, and a 25 thou extra uh, meat at the end. Okay, now I have zeroed my DROs in the X and Y direction. We're going to go ahead and uh, drill and tap for a quarter 24 in that horizontal rod. Okay, we're going to use a 7 32nd inch drill. All right, for the next operation, we're going to go ahead and use this Dormer spiral uh, point tap rather than a spiral flute tap. As you can see, the flutes are straight, but the, uh, there's a spiral point at the tip, which should push the chips forwards, and it's great for a through hole. Okay, we'll go at about 100 RPM and lots of tap magic. These dormer taps cut very well. So here's the main bar with its copper tip and here's the horizontal bar. We'll screw them in together and then tighten it up as best as we can. I think these threads are properly tensioned. It's not going to accidentally come apart. And now for some bending. And here's the new bar after having made the bent. And you can see there's plenty of clearance uh, vertically. And here we are sitting level with the table and uh, there's uh, no rocking uh, at all. And so it should pivot just on two points and that way we'll have three points of contact, only the tip and the two end points of the horizontal bar. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, uh, please be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.